OK, so at this point, our character's moving. And the next thing we want to do is set up the animation system that will allow him to uh, move around. But I'm going to give you kind of a heads up. In between videos, I was playing around with the level. Uh, I made things a little bit bigger. I made a couple of copies of the platform. So if I play real quick, you'll see things are just a little bit different than they were. Uh, we've got something now we can jump up on. So what we're going to do now is set up uh, the animation. And we'll go ahead and add a jump in here as well. In fact, it would probably be easier to do that first. So here we are back in the character blueprint. And the jump is really easy. Uh, because earlier in our inputs, we added a, uh, an action, uh, an input action for jumping. All i got to do is type in jump. And if you take a look in here, you'll see action events for jump. So we'll create one of those. And I'll drag a wire off this and just type in jump. And you see that comes right in with the character. So boom. There we go. That's really all we need to do. Uh, we could go ahead and put a comment block around that for consistency and call this uh, jumping. OK, now we want our character to uh, animate. And the way we're going to handle that is by way of a custom event with a little bit of blueprint logic. It's important to note that right now, uh, animation blueprints do not work with Paper 2D. So really, what we're going to do is create the logic that will swap out between our different character flipbooks and just go from there. So uh, let's start off with our own custom event. Now, this is essentially the exact same setup uh, that is created in the template. Once we get this done, I'll show you how to change this over to something a bit more like a state machine that will be a little more extensible later on if you wanted to add your own animations. I'm going to call this uh, update animation, like so. And then what's going to happen on update animation is we're essentially just going to get the velocity of the character. We're going to convert that over to a Boolean. So basically, is he moving or is he not moving? And then we're going to uh, perform a select between our two, uh, our two animation flipbooks to control the, uh, the character either running or standing in his idle pose. So first, let's go ahead and get that velocity. So uh, let's just type in uh, velocity. So boom, we'll get velocity. Let's get uh, the length of the velocity vector. Now, by getting the length, we're essentially doing a speed calculation. So if you just type in length and grab vector length, the length of the velocity vector is the same as speed. And what we're going to do here is essentially just see if that is greater than a value of 0. And that's it. That just basically says, is he moving, yes or no? Um, true means he's moving, and uh, false means he's not. Now, we're going to use this as a way to select between our different flipbooks. So I'm going to right click and just create a select node. Now, notice I am not creating this from any existing wire. Uh, that's going to be important. And the select node is a, kind of a special node. It's really made of a whole lot of different wild cards, meaning you can plug just about anything into it, and it will uh, select between whatever you plug in. So what we're going to do is take this Boolean value for whether or not we're moving, and we'll plug that into the index. And you see the index immediately updates to a Boolean. Now, we have option 0 and option 1. And what I'm going to do is right click on this. And you'll notice one of the actions in your, uh, in your context menu is change pin type. So we'll click on that. And this gives you a little drop down you can choose for the type of data that you want to select between. And what we want to select between is a flipbook. So we'll type in flipbook, and you'll see paper flipbook right here. So click on that. So we're choosing between two different flipbooks, which is perfect. If we click the drop down here, we should see idle and run. Now, here's how this works. Uh, 0 is going to be for false. 1 is going to be for true. So for 0, we want idle. And for true, we want run. We're going to ignore the fact that there's a jump in there. We're actually going to set that up uh, in a different video. OK, so uh, here's our update animation. It's going to select between these two flipbooks. Now we just need to assign that to our sprite. Now to get access to our sprite over here in the My Blueprint panel, we need to check on Show Inherited Variables. Uh, that allows us to see the sprite. We'll drag that in and get it. And we can just drag a wire off that and say Set Flipbook. And we'll just connect that over like so. And the flipbook we want to choose is the result of this select. So now I'll kind of arrange my nodes for a little bit better readability and scoot this in so everybody can see, give a, a nice little bit of screen space adjustment. And there you go. There is our basic animation setup, essentially the same way you see it inside the Paper 2D template. So let's compile this, and we'll save it. And we should be able to test our jump as well. So here we are. Oh, 
looks like we're actually not uh, selecting through this right now, and there's, there's a really obvious reason why. Uh, this is a custom event, and apparently we have uh, never made a call to it, so let's do that. Now, uh, the question uh, that comes up next would be, what's the best time to call this? You may be inclined to call this on tick, uh, which is that's not the worst assumption to make. What we're going to do instead, though, is call it when the player is moving the character around. So right here after our add movement input, I'm just going to drag a wire out, and we'll make a call to update animation. Boom, you see that calls the function. So that's actually going to call that custom event that we have down here below. So now let's compile and save one more time. And now if I hit play, oh, you see we're running, which is great. And if we hit space, we jump, which is perfect. So we have a character now that can run through the scene. And we can see him moving. We have a little bit of jump action. And that's essentially all I wanted to show in this video. Now in the next video, we will come back and I will show you how to update this animation system to make it a little bit more like an animation state machine. Uh, we'll build a, cu a custom function that will take in an amount of data, we'll apply some rules to that data, and based on the results of those rules and tests, we'll output the appropriate flipbook that we want. For now, though, that's going to wrap things up, so thanks a lot.